Hi everybody. Today we're going to talk about the auditory sensation system or hearing. And we're going to compare it a little bit to visual processing as we move along, as we've already spoken about that. And like visual processing, we use waves of stimulus energy from the outside world to transduce um, that information into a signal that the brain can decode as sound so we can hear. Now the ears are what translate vibrating airwaves into neural impulses that become sound. And much like vision, we can measure the amplitude and the wavelength of a sound wave, which determines how loud and the pitch of a sound. So if we are looking at amplitude here of a sound wave, and we have a sound wave like this coming in, or we have a sound wave like this coming in. Uh, both of those sound waves basically have the same frequency, which means peak to peak. And that means that they have the same pitch. Both those sound waves, A and B, have the same pitch. But if we look at the amplitude, which is the height of the sound wave, we can kind of see that um, sound wave A has a higher amplitude, which means that, that sound wave A is going to have a louder sound. So amplitude determines how loud a sound is and wavelength determines frequency. So if we had a wavelength like this versus a wavelength like this, um, the top sound wave is going to have a lower pitch. Um, so low sound wave, long sound waves have a pitch kind of like those from a bass guitar or a bass drum. And short wavelengths that have a high frequency are going to have a much higher pitch. So it would be like those from a violin. Now, as we talk about the process of hearing, we're going to talk about the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. Now, we're going to talk about the outer ear first and the outer ear or pinna, which is the ear part we see uh, people on people. And, um, the outer part of their ear. The purpose of that really is to direct sound waves coming in. So as sound waves come in from the outer world uh, into our ear, that sound wave travels and is funneled into the middle ear or the pinna in the outer ear. Now as sound travels through the outer ear in the ear canal, um, it basically goes to the eardrum and it causes the eardrum to, to vibrate. And remember, higher amplitude waves will cause the eardrum to vibrate more intensely or deeper, like hitting a drum softly would be a low amplitude, and hitting a bass drum very intensely would create a higher amplitude wave. And the frequency of the wave causes the eardrum to vibrate um, more rapidly or less rapidly. So the eardrum here, which is this part right here, um, is a membrane that vibrates in and out and out. And that eardrum amplifies the sound that's coming in and causes these tiny little parts in the middle ear, which is right in here, the middle part of the ear, causes the hammer the anvil and the stirrup, tiny, tiny little bones to strike each other and amplify the sound uh, maybe two to three times to amplify that sound wave. And collectively, these bones are called ossicles and they amplify the vibrations and transfer those vibrations to the oval window and onto the cochlea, which is this bony, part of our inner ear that kind of looks like a snail shell on its side and this is in the inner ear and these little bones as they vibrate 
really cause um, a tiny little membrane called the oval window. I'm going to write that here. To vibrate in and out. So um, that little membrane moves in and out and causes a, a vibration in the fluid, in the cochlea. Okay. Now the fluid in the cochlea is going to move in response to the stirrup vibrations. So if we kind of look here, if the stirrup kind of looks like a stirrup on a saddle of a horse, and as um, that vibration occurs, there is a the oval window which vibrates in and out, and that causes a wave in the fluid in the cochlea. Now as a side note, uh, remember the cochlea is a a sealed chamber, so you would not be able to push into that fluid if there was no place for the fluid to go. So on the bottom of the cochlea, as we got the, our cochlea kind of shaped like this, as that vibration in fluid goes up, it has to come out someplace, and where that, that fluid pushes out is actually called the round window the round window. I, I see it as kind of like pushing on, if you have a, a, a new bottle of water that has not been opened up yet and you try to push on it, it's really hard to squeeze because there's no place for the water to go. But if you take the top off, uh, you can kind of squeeze that water bottle in and the water will move up towards the top of the bottle. So the waves in this in this cochlea cause a ripple effect and causes a, a ripple effect in something called the basilar membrane. So we're going to look at kind of a side view of the cochlea. We're going to stand it up on its side. And the cochlea really has three chambers. And one of those chambers is an ascending chamber. Um, one is a descending chamber. And then there's a very important chamber in between those two things. So let's take a look um, over here. If we go to the right side, um, over here, and we take that, that cochlea and kind of put it on its side. Notice this is kind of one turn right here. And when the stirrup pushes on the oval window, there that vibration will travel upwards and this it's kind of called the scale of vestibuli, but you probably won't have to know that. But as uh, the wave travels up to the apex up here, the wave will then travel down and out in the descending chamber, which is called the scala of timpani. And this little chamber right here in between is what we want to look at. Um, it's called the cochlear duct. So let's go down to the next page and take a look at that. And as we see a side view right here of one of those um, ascending and descending chambers, what we have out here is the bony part of the cochlea, a very hard shell. And inside we have some chambers. Now, Remember, the scale of vestibuli is the ascending chamber. So when a wave travels up to the apex, remember, the stirrup pushes on that fluid and creates a wave in here. And that wave travels upwards to the apex of the cochlea. And what happens is when that wave travels through this area, it's going to push down on this membrane here, and it's going to create a ripple effect in the cochlear duct, which is in between the scale of vestibuli, the ascending chamber, and the descending chamber. Okay, and what this wave, when it pushes down, it pushes down on something called the tectoral membrane. Again, you probably won't have to know that by name for the AP test. But it, it kind of looks like a tongue, and it's very flexible. And when, when a wave pushes down here, it 
it pushes down on these tiny little hair cells that go over here to the side that rest on this part right here, another membrane, which is called the basilar membrane right here. And on that basilar membrane sits, a, sits many, many rows of tiny hair cells. Okay, tiny hair cells. Now this whole area is called the organ of corti. It's in the cochlear duct. And if we come back over here and we look, the basilar membrane located in the organ of corti is lined with these hair cells. And on top of each of these hair cells, so we've got a hair cell here, right? We've got a hair cell. And right up on top of there are these tiny, tiny little hair cells called stereocilia, or just cilia. Remember, these are tiny, tiny, tiny microscopic hairs. And these are stimulated when waves in the cochlea push down on the cilia, causing the hair cells to bend. These hair cells bend. And when they bend, they send a signal, kind of like the um, visual nerve, right? The um, nerve that leads the back of the eye. These axons send signals via the auditory nerve, instead of the optic nerve. This is the auditory nerve, and they go to the brain. But let's take a look over here quick. Um, right here, we have a mi great microscopic photo of a cluster of these hair cells. Now, notice there's one, two, three, four, five, six rows. Some are taller than others. Now, if you, if you kind of imagine, I'm going to try and draw this for you quickly here, that we've got this tectoral membrane it kind of comes across the top like this. And when that wave comes down through the ascending chamber and pushes down the cochlear duct, um, as this moves down, those hair cells will bend. And they'll bend down like this. And the higher the amplitude the wave is, the more it's going to push down on those hair cells. Now, I've heard and read that that middle row is where about 95% of our transduction takes place, and the other hair cells either dampen or um, strengthen that signal, amplify it. But imagine if these hair cells bend just a tiny bit. They bend just a little bit, and they move just maybe to here. Okay? That would be a low amplitude sound. That would be a low... Um, amplitude, which would be a soft sound, They're very soft sounds, okay? But what if we have a very loud sound coming through, like a rock concert? Those hair cells may bend way back to here, which means if they bend way back, we're going to have not one row, not two rows, not three rows, but maybe four or five rows of these hair cells even bending way down. And over time, if you think of those hair cells as carpet fibers and you have heavy furniture sitting on there for a long period of time, what's going to happen to those fibers is they're not going to bounce back up. They're going to get stuck down there. They're going to get broken, and we're going to lose hearing, um, or we may have a ringing in our ears. Um, which is not good. So um, we're going to move on a little bit. And remember the distance, the distance the wave travels, okay, in that cochlea, and which hair cells are stimulated is determined by the frequency. And the basilar membrane is stiffer at the top of the cochlea, which allows different parts of the cochlea to send signals. But we're going to get to that in our next video. We're going to stop there, and please rewind if you need to. And we will be back with the second video um, shortly.